continuing to load both stages. Uh, first stage is nearly full on liquid oxygen, and our second stage is about three quarters full on liquid oxygen. Uh, we will continue loading liquid oxygen onto the vehicles up until the T-minus three minute mark. Uh, that's where we will finish chopping off liquid oxygen uh, on our first stage. Right now we have just finished loading uh, cryogenic helium on both stages and we are about to resume uh, liquid oxygen loading. We are launching today from Kennedy Space Center, which means we are working with the Space Center as well as the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station uh, to support today's mission. Both the range as well as the Space Center have given us a green light for today's mission. They have cleared the nearby uh, area around the pad as well as the launch corridor. And they are tracking no issues. You can see it is beautiful, clear skies at Kennedy Space Center. Weather will not be a constraint for today's mission. Weather is go for today's launch. Hey, everybody. Earth Discernment. Well, we covered this live today. The SpaceX fraud launch. As you can see, no mercy on the chem trailing. <laughs> This fairing is what we use to protect the satellite from the aerodynamic forces of ascent. And once we leave most of Earth's atmosphere, that fairing will separate along a seam in the middle. Um, and that fairing will fall back to Earth. Fairing separation will occur shortly after stage separation. Our mission today is taking Bulgaria Sat 1 to a geostationary transfer orbit. After that satellite will separate from second stage, it will use its own onboard thrusters to perform orbital adjustments over a few weeks, and that will place Bulgaria Sat 1 into a geostationary orbit at the Bulgarian orbital position. So look how they uh, pump this up. They just uh, want to talk a bunch of uh, rigmarole beforehand, you know, giving little miscellaneous details on things. and. Uh, get y'all you know, believing in what they're about to do and launch this uh, balloon type helium thing with a rocket show fireworks coming out of the bottom of it. Um, it's kind of funny watching the lead up intro. I you know, had streamed this on the 24-7 channel today and it was great to have live chat on it as well as uh, going into some of the chats. There was about 50,000 in a Bulgarian uh, chat room watching this go off live. And so it was funny they weren't even speaking English, but somehow whenever the word flat was mentioned in that chat, they were banned immediately. Pretty hilarious. Um, I'm thinking about fast forwarding this, but I'll watch a little bit more with you. I played it a bunch of times on the site today, but here you go. Geostationary orbit is about 35,786 kilometers away from Earth. Uh, it is sized such that the orbit period matches the Earth's rotation. That's what you're seeing on your screen right now. Essentially, the satellite is going to appear as a fixed star in the sky from a specific region of Earth, and that satellite will provide constant coverage over that region. Yeah, we're going to we'll see it like a star. Manufactured <clears throat> by Space Systems Doral out of Palo Alto, California. We have a quick video today to show you exactly what it took to get the satellite ready for today's launch and onto the pad for today's mission. they think that they're really going to be putting this up. Now, this probably is going to be up in, uh, up in uh, what would you say, the air on a hot air balloon. So, you know, with solar power, it makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, some of the engineering may be very real. Uh, you know, 
that's part of what I'm thinking. So it's just kind of kind of crazy, though, that some of it might be designed for space. So just imagine the level of deception has to uh, occur here. Well, we can tell they're better at CGI on this than <laughs> Yeah, that's how they built the Bulgarian people out of money there. Six minutes from launch. I actually can't take the suspense. You can probably get the full video. Well, of course, go to their site, get the full video. Let me try to find launch here. More rigmarole. Four minutes. We are coming up on strong back retraction. You can see at the top of your screen, there are some arms that cradle the rocket next to our strong back. That is the structure to the right side. What a show. Look at all that steam coming out. And that's very, it would be likely, but it goes so slow on, lift, on liftoff. Backwards one and a half degrees. And then at this point in time, once we reach the T0, the Strombeck will fall away as the rocket lifts off. We are coming into terminal count. Uh, the last major event being at T minus one minute where our ground systems will hand over control of the rocket to the onboard flight computer. Uh, at that point in time, our onboard flight computer will govern the entire countdown sequence, performing the final checks across Falcon 9. Uh, as well as our final ground system checks as we throttle up to make sure we are ready for liftoff. And so we are going to go silent on our end here at the webcast unless you listen in to the final few minutes of terminal counts as we await liftoff of Bulgaria Sat-1 from Kennedy Space Center at Pad 39A in Florida. Oh, so exciting. Hanging on every word. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. Thirty seconds. Yeah. Falcon Nine flight computers have taken control of the countdown. 20. Falcon 9 is configured for flight. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Not appear real to me. RC copies. Well, the shape of the flame. Okay, well, we'll just uh, suspend disbelief here for a little bit. And we certainly know they can launch rockets. Uh, there's no question that that can be done just the rate of ascent when it first takes off. On its way to delivering Bulgaria Sat-1 to a geostationary transfer orbit. All nine Merlin engines capable of putting out over 1.7 million pounds of thrust. Starting to, as you can tell, is true to form, leveling off, going out over sea. Up on max Q at one minute and 18 seconds, roughly. We'll be passing through max Q, that is maximum aerodynamic pressure. We just crossed through it. That is one of the highest stressed states on the rocket. Look at 
with their own footage. Appears to almost be heading downward. I know it could be perspective, they'll say, but we know better. It's going out of our sea so they can ditch. So we're over 20 kilometers above the surface of Earth. You can see the end. Parachute would pop out, it would go down, and they would retrieve it. That is indicative that we are leaving Earth's atmosphere. If indeed that rocket's actually real. You just heard the call out that the Merlin vacuum engine on second stage has begun chilling in. This means that we are getting ready for three major events main engine cutoff, Miko 1, stage separation, and second engine start. We'll talk about all three of them after they occur. Well, here's that footage. You know, you'd swear it was the same exact one as some of the other launches, as if they're using the same exact footage. I'll have to compare some videos to take a look, but we just know that they're in cartoon mode here. You'll notice the curve of the Earth disappears here in a little bit. The fake curve. Yep, oh, here it is. The big uh, cartoons going off. What you just saw there in quick succession was Miko main engine cutoff, followed by stage separation, which was done by four pneumatic actuators on the forward end of our first stage. And then on the right side of your screen... Yeah, there's a lack of curve in this particular shot. It actually starts curving the other direction here shortly. That glowing red nozzle on the second stage is how you can see that we have uh, a good ignition in space. We will have fairing separation in about 15 seconds. Just happened right now. Yep. It's like a good separation of the fairing. That was a brief glimpse of Bulgaria sat within the fairing of our second stage. This means we have left Earth's atmosphere, majority of Earth's atmosphere. Now have you? On the left side of your so screen, you are seeing an image signal. from the top tin foil in space stage. You see two grid fins uh, in the sides of that image. We use those grid fins to guide the stage through the atmosphere to the drone ship. And you know why it's a drone ship? So they have no witnesses. These do look small, but they are about five feet long, about four feet wide. So they're rather large as we, we use them to guide ourselves back. You are also seeing occasional puffs uh, come out from the side of the stage. Those are cold nitrogen thrusters that we use to help orient the stage. Now, coming up in about a minute, we have our entry burn of the first stage. This is a three-engine entry burn. Uh, for today's mission, since we are landing on the drone ship, we do not have a boost back burn. We only have an entry burn and a landing burn. Two burns total for today's mission for the first stage. As I mentioned previously, our entry coming in for first stage is one of the highest heating and structural loads. Uh, so this is a very challenging first stage maneuver to land on our drone ship. Of course, I still love you. See how it's curving the other direction there in that shot. Of course, I still love you has AOS. You just heard confirmation that our drone ship has acquisition of single AOS of the first stage. As One point. camera is good. Oh, this, oh, yeah, hmm. What happened here? What did he switch to? It's on the other side. Interesting. Oh, yeah, this must be the other rocket then. There you go. First stage, stage one, everybody has started. 
This is ignition of the entry burn. This burn will last for about 20 seconds. Three engine entry burn on the first stage on the left. Stage one entry burn shut down. We have a good shutdown, confirmation of a good shutdown of the first stage entry burn. Now, it is normal for us to see some of the uh, soot appear on the camera screen. We may also lose, uh, occasionally lose coverage of the first stage entry as we come in through the horizon. Uh, that is all perfectly normal. Of course. You didn't lose any. Uh... This is expected to lose the signal from stage one. We will have uh, signal acquisition as we come closer to the drone ship. It's just ridiculous. Meanwhile, you're seeing on our too hard to fake. Stage, they lose coverage. Second, this burn will last stage about eight stage minutes, on. thirty seconds, uh, and then we will have a coast phase for the second stage uh, before we do our final burn to put Bulgaria Sat into a geostationary transfer orbit. Second stage here, TSS saved. We're coming up in about 30 seconds on our landing burn from the first stage. About 45 more seconds for this uh, stage two burn. Landing burn has started. The confirmation of the landing burn has started. Landing legs have deployed. And it looks like we may have lost some of the footage coming in for the landing ship, uh, for coming in for the drone ship. What a joke. Again, they lose coverage. It's absolutely ridiculous. They keep doing this on the landings even when they do show up. We know it'll be uh, really fake. We to lose signal from the drone ship as we come in. If you've watched previous uh, missions, uh, that is not uncommon for us to lose coverage of the first stage coming back to the drone ships. Uh, the rocket vibrations uh, coming into is something like that can Falcon cause some landed, issues. <laughs> and it looks like we did have a good recovery of the first stage. Um, video feed did come back. That is touchdown for first stage on the drone ship. This was a three-engine landing burn. Most challenging landing to date. Successfully touched back down on Of Course I Still Love You. Meanwhile, we have a good orbit for second stage. We are in a good parking orbit for second stage.